Okay. <laughs> no microphone? <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. I have a laptop today. So cool. This is my husband's. <laughs> All right. So, um, man, Yolanda, you can preach this lesson because you did an amazing welcome. So I just want to point that out because um, you kind of talked a little bit about what I'm going to talk about. But my lesson today is about becoming a godly woman of faith. Um, this is a topic that Jaleesa gave me about six weeks ago. And for the past six weeks, I've been trying to put this lesson together. So each time I tried, I got a different topic. <laughs> so this is actually a lesson combined with several different topics. So it's not going to be points. It's going to be like sub topics or something Great. so I have um, I have 35 minutes to give you five hours of no <laughs> so I'll just uh, do my best all right so um, the first subtopic I have is chosen to have faith first yeah. Peter 1 verse 1 through 2 okay and I have 35 minutes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to God's elect, exiles scattered throughout the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia, who have been chosen according to the knowledge, foreknowledge of God the Father through the sanctifying work of the Spirit, to be obedient to Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm and sprinkled with his blood. Grace and peace be yours in abundance. So this passage was written to the Christians in the first century church, as well as to us today. And in this passage, it's saying to God's elect. That's how it's addressed, right? Um, we are also God's elect. We are also chosen by God's foreknowledge to be obedient to Christ. Yeah. So being obedient to Christ is a demonstration of your faith. Yeah. It's how we live or faith, live out or faith. So we are chosen to have faith. We were chosen to live by faith. Romans 14, 23 says, everything that does not come from faith is sin. Mm -hmm. If we are not living by faith, we are in sin. Yeah. So since we are chosen to live by faith, to have faith, let us choose to have faith. Amen. Amen. So Ephesians 1 verse 4 through 7 says, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. To the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through the blood, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. So here again, you see that it's telling us that God chose us mm -hmm. to have faith, Amen. right? Before we were even born, God chose us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever felt like you're, you were different growing up, or this is why, right? You were chosen <laughs> come on, come on. to have faith, predestined for it. In the further down in verse 11, in him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. So do you realize that God has and is working in your life to draw you closer to him? If you do not realize that God has been working in your life to bring you into a relationship with him, 
then you're not choosing to have faith in the fact that you were chosen. Okay? In, if you put your faith in this truth, then you will change your thinking and choose to have a godly perspective about your past, about your experiences in the present, and about your future. Okay? If you put your faith in this truth, it will change your thinking and, and help you to choose to have a godly perspective about everything that has happened to you in your life. And then your past will no longer have power over you. Okay, you will not be defeated by your past or feel a victim to it. Okay, so once you accept the spiritual truth that you're chosen, you will believe that God has never been far from you, that he has been working powerfully in your life to draw you to him, and you will reject any wrong beliefs you've ever had about yourself, okay, which is from Satan. And you will... And your past, and hold on, I'm sorry, I don't understand my notes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So God allowed everything that has ever happened to you, everything that is happening now and everything that will ever happen. He is not unaware. Okay. He is sovereign. And no one comes to God on their own. John 6, says, no one come to me unless the father who sent me draws them. So God has planned this from the very beginning, before you were even born, working everything out, allowing everything happening in your life to at some point draw you to himself. Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 says, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourself. This is a gift of God, right? So... When you're not guarding this truth, your walls will be broken down and Satan's demons can attack. All right. So I just want to encourage you, sisters, to learn. Let's let go of self-pity. Let's let go of negativity, of victim mentality. Not worry about what people think about you or how people may treat you. Let's let go of these things, of people pleasing and idolatry. Because all that matters is what God thinks of you. Right. Yeah. Okay? The question is, is it enough for you that God chose you and values you? Because if that is enough, then you will let go of everything else. Okay? Um, so let's stop idolizing people. There are so many indications of when we idolize people. Yeah. Okay. One of them is that you will imitate not just the good, but the bad yeah. in them. All right. We are not worshiping man. We're worshiping God. Yes. Let's listen to the words God spoke to Jeremiah when he appointed him as a prophet. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5 says, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. So just like Jeremiah, God created you. God knows you. God has set you apart. God appointed you for a specific purpose. And, and I encourage you to meditate on these truths. Once you have put your faith in the fact that you've chosen, you will understand more what God expects from you, what he, his purpose is for you. Even if no one else knows, you will. Yeah. Okay? All that matters is God and what he thinks of you. So let's have faith in the fact we're chosen. My second subtopic ooh, is your faith is where your walk with God begins. Romans 3 verse 25 says, 
God presented Christ as a sacrifice of atonement through the shedding of his blood to be received by faith. Right? So you're saved because you chose to have faith in the blood of Jesus. And that's where your relationship with God began. Once you chose to have faith in the blood of Jesus, you chose to repent of your sins. You chose to be obedient to his word and to get baptized for the forgiveness of your sins so that God can put his Holy Spirit in you as his temple. That is the point your marriage with God began. That is the point your relationship with God began. That's when you got the ring on the finger, right? So will you honor that covenant? Will you honor that? God has been planning this for your life before you were even born. Before that, before your rebirth into God's kingdom, he was your maker. He was your creator. He watched over you. He was not far from you, but there was never a relationship. Okay. So your relationship began at this point. The point when you decided to put your faith in the blood that saves you. Hebrews 9.22 says, Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So we cannot literally understand how this happens, right? In our physical minds. It takes faith. Okay? And as we are obedient to God in the physical world, we're putting our faith in the spiritual world, which we cannot see and we cannot understand. So let's understand this is where your relationship begins. My subtopic number three, I'm trying to go through quickly, okay. Becoming a godly woman of faith takes having confidence in God's promises and in who God is. So let's look at Abraham, Hebrews 11, verse 1 through 3. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was seen or visible. So faith is confidence. Not confidence in yourself, even though that's not a bad thing, but even people who come in the kingdom with a lot of confidence still need to learn to put their confidence in God. Okay? Those who come in with very little confidence still need to put their confidence in God. It doesn't matter how we come in here. We all are at the same level of learning how to put our confidence in God. Okay? Faith is having full assurance. Assurance means certainty. It means freedom from doubt. When we look at the world around us, when we look at the skies, when we look at the birds, when we look at nature and all the great creatures in the sea and all the trees and everything that God has created, we do not doubt that all of nature, this was created by God. We have a lot of confidence in that, even though we cannot see him. But do you have the same confidence in every area of your life? Okay. Do not doubt. Faith and doubt cannot coexist. Anyone I've discipled before will know. I've said this to them before. Do not entertain doubt. When doubt enters your mind, you rebuke it. You have to be confident in God, not in ourselves, in God, right? right? Doubt is from the enemy, and we must learn to rebuke it from our minds. Faith is confidence in God. So Hebrews 10, 22, 23 says, Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with full assurance, without doubt, 
that faith, the full assurance that faith brings. Mm -hmm. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, let us hold unswervingly yeah. to the hope that we profess, mm -hmm. for he who promised is faithful. Full assurance here is talking about your faith. It means to have no doubt, to be free from doubt, to be full of certainty and confidence. And we must hold unswervingly to that, not wavering back and forth and teeter-tottering back and forth. Okay? We must be firm in our faith. Mm -hmm. yes. Come on. We cannot make room in our minds for doubt, because when we do, we are opening the doors of our minds to Satan's schemes and his attacks. We have that power over our minds to choose to have confidence in the word of God and who God says he is. Right. James 1, 6 says, the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in what they do, in all they do. So faith will strengthen you. Faith will become, help you to get your firm foundation, your, it, to make the word and God your solid rock. Doubt weakens you. You will give Satan a foothold in your heart when you allow doubt to govern your thoughts. Yes. Don't be double-minded, sisters. Do not be unstable. Okay, and this is what the ancients were commended for. They were not commended for all the great accomplishments they had. They were not commended for their abilities. They're not commended for their talents. Sometimes we can get caught up in comparing ourselves with, you know, people who have more gifts or more talents. It's not about that. It's simply about our faith. That's all it is. Okay? And that's what they were commended for. The people in the, the, um, just this thing is so slow. Okay. Uh, so they chose to have faith despite how impossible it seemed despite the difficult path they had to take, despite if they couldn't understand what God was asking them to do, they chose to have faith. Mm -hmm. And they chose to believe God's promises, even when they couldn't see it, even when it was not fulfilled in their lifetime. Mm -hmm. okay? But they chose to believe, just like 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 says, no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes, yes. in Christ. And they chose to believe that. Yeah. So remain confident in what you don't understand. Remain confident when they remain confident in times of danger, when they were barren and chalice. Mm -hmm. Remain confident in the commands of God and his direction and his guidance. Hebrews 11, 16, 17, verse 19 says, It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises, was ready to sacrifice his only son. Even though God had told him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Abraham reasoned that if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. And in a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. So we can learn from Abraham. We must reason with ourselves. Do you reason with yourself when you find yourself doubting and lacking faith? Everything takes faith. If you're going through a difficult time and you cannot see or understand, do you reason with yourself about what the Word of God says and about whether you understand it or whether you believe it? That is something that I do a lot. I will talk to myself, do I believe this? And if I 
don't believe it, yeah. then I get very firm with myself. God said it. God, you Come said on. this. Okay? You said <laughs> that you will never give me more than I can bear. Come you on. said, so I'm going to choose to believe it. Yeah. And I will talk myself and reason until I get to that point yeah. where I believe. Come on. Okay? Amen. We must reason with ourselves. Uh, and Abraham reasoned with himself. Is anything too hard for God? God gave him a promise. So even though God, what God was asking did not make sense or seem contrary to that promise, Abraham reasoned with himself and chose to have confidence in who God is and God's promises. So over the years, that's something that I put into practice. And anyone I've discipled, I'm pretty sure they've heard that from me as well, right? Something I've asked people is when you are struggling, when you're feeling weak, when you're going through hardship, does any scripture come up in your mind? And if they say no, then my answer is then you're probably not meditating on the word enough. Because when you're reasoning with yourself and meditating on God's word, when it comes time, when you're going through your struggles, when you're going through your hardship, Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will bring the word back to you at the right time and give you strength and give you confidence. Okay? So to reason with God, we must spend time meditating on his word. Psalm 119, 147 to 148 says, I rise before dawn and cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. So let's meditate on the word of God, not just fly through it and read through it, but really ponder it and ask yourself, there are times when you're going to feel or realize that you're not really believing what the word says. So you do not move on until you believe it. Okay. My fourth subtopic, humility helps you to have faith. Mary, Luke 1 45 was, this was said about Mary, the mother of Jesus. This was written, I'm sorry, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promise to her. Why would Mary believe such an impossible thing? Why did she not give in to fear of losing her future husband or fear of what people may think or fear of the huge responsibility that it would be to raise the son of God? Because she was told she was going to be the mother of the, the son of God, right? Wow. Why did she not get a victim mindset mm. that she was unworthy mm. to be chosen for such a task? Oh. Mary understood one thing. She was able to be humble after the angel Gabriel told her she was chosen to be the mother of the son of the most high because Mary considered herself as only a servant. And as she considered herself a servant, it helped her heart to be humble. And when you see yourself as just a servant, titles do not matter. What people think of you doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if you're left out, it does not matter. Because you know all you are is a servant yeah. to God. And it will help your heart to be surrendered yeah. and humble. Yeah. True. Regardless if you do not understand. You'll be surrendered in ch- times of change. Yeah. You'll be surrendered in times of difficult. It doesn't mean it's not going to be difficult. That's why it's called difficult times. Yeah. Right? But you will be surrendered. May not get there right away, but you will make yourself get there because of your faith. Okay? It was all about God for Mary, not about herself. When things are all about you, your heart will be filled with pride. 
you'll be easily critical, easily angered, you know, disrespectful. Guys, we're not called. It's not just the leaders are called for a certain standard. We all are. Okay? There's nobody above anyone else. Okay? So let's all hold ourselves to the standard. I've seen sometimes, you know, in D groups where people are just, you know, it's the leaders they're giving wholeheartedly, but others are looking around and they're all distracted and you're on your phone when someone is speaking. You're not really giving your hearts. Sisters, that's a lack of humility. To consider others above yourself. Respect others above yourself. Yes. Treat others the way you want to be treated. Yes. Do you understand the way you treat your leaders, the way you treat each other? Mm. You're doing the same thing to Jesus. Yes. Let's be humble. Yes. This is not all about you. Yes. When you're surrendered, then you, sacrifice, you understand you belong to God. Yes. Right? Yes. So it's not all about you. You don't walk away after your D groups or your times with, and not even give people a hug. Yeah. Let's not be rude no. to Amen. each other. No. Let's consider one another Amen. above ourselves. Come on, Denise. Lift each other's hands up. Yes. Encourage one another. I'm off my lesson. Okay. Um, even. So we belong to God. Yeah. You belong to God. You're yeah. bought with a price. You do not belong to yourself. Yes. We belong to God. That's yes. right. So 2 Corinthians 1.22 says, God, he has set his seal of ownership on you, mm. on us, and put his spirit in your heart mm. as a deposit guaranteeing you what is to come. Yeah. You belong to him. Not to yourself. God has set his seal of ownership on you, on me. Okay? Mary's attitude, when after she was told, she answered the angel in Luke 138, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Do you see yourself as just God's servant? It's not that Mary was perfect. It's having faith does not mean that you're going to be perfect in the flesh. Okay. So far from it. I am so far from it. I need God. Right. God sees you already as perfect through his son. It doesn't mean that you're never going to fail. Faith, having faith doesn't mean that you're not going to fall. It doesn't mean that you won't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you, you won't drift from God. Yeah. Okay. Don't hold others to a standard of perfection that you yourself cannot achieve. Wow. You do this because you're still having your eyes on people and not on God. So it still, it still isn't all about God for you as yet. It's still all about you, okay? Because when it is all about God, you give grace. Yes. When it's all about God, you show kindness, you show compassion, you continue to love and accept people where they're at, okay? Let's, uh, let me move to my next topic. Time is going. Your faith, um, top, subtopic number five, I may have to do this as the last one. Your faith is a spiritual, spiritual shield. 1 Peter 1, verse 3 through 5. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish spoil or fade this inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by god's power 
until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Through faith, we are shielded by God's power. So your faith is your spiritual shield. Ephesians 6 verse 16 says, In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Faith is your shield. How does faith act as a shield? Through the power of God. Okay. Through faith, we are shielded by God's power. In other words, God is fighting for you. All you need is faith. So let me ask you, are you fighting for yourself? Are you your own shield or is God your shield? Okay. How do you know when you're being your own shield versus having God be your shield? Do you get defensive? Do you get critical? Do you get unloving, combative, bitter? Those things are indication that you're being your own shield. We become sinful when we're trying to protect ourselves. Okay but nobody can protect you better than God. Yeah. Faith helps us in every area of our lives to live how God wants us to live, to love how he wants us to love. Our faith will help us to overcome our flesh and achieve the standards by which God wants us to live. As we live by faith, it will shield us from Satan's attacks and schemes and help us to overcome and see victory. As we live by faith, we rely on the power of God. Okay, 828. Um, so I want to encourage you, read James chapter 2 and verse 26, it says, So as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Mm. And so I'm going to skip to my last point, subtopic, which is your faith will bring you to the end. Mm. Just like we read before, okay, it is your, in 1 Peter 1, verse 8 through 9, though, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy because you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The end result is heaven, where we will spend eternity with God. And that one day, <laughs> sisters, I pray that we can all together say what Paul has said. I have fought the good fights. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, with the Lord, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all of us who have longed for his appearing. So sisters, let's fight the good fight with our faith and run this race to win the crown at the end. Yeah. Love you guys.